Blah. You know, I was thinking about where things are going with these comic book movies and whatnot, and how every movie is really just a continuation of a, of a much bigger story. So no matter how many Marvel movie films or whatever, D, I guess DC films to a lesser extent that you go and see, you're never going to be able to get the whole story because you're going to have to wait for the end credit sequence. And then in the end credit sequence, there's going to be a scene or two scenes or three scenes that show you what's coming up in the next film. It's part of the, the, the capitalistic part of the movie making business. There's always got to be more, always have to have more stuff ready to go. And, um, and you know, the problem with that a little bit is that it gets, it's gotten very tired and formulaic to the point where I was watching like Black Adam, uh, the, the, the rock, um, adaptation of, of the Shazam character, the Shazam villain, Black Adam. And I just, it was just so paint by numbers boring to me. And here you have this movie with all of this insane, you know, action and, and all this crazy stuff happening. And it just, none of it just, it all just washed over me. And I'm just kind of like, ugh, whatever. Uh, and that's what leads me to the idea that perhaps movies and films are not the right medium for these kinds of stories anymore because everything is so paint by numbers. And instead, you know, instead of getting the same cookie cutter kind of stories, perhaps things would change if you did either limited series or just straight up TV seasons of these shows. And starting with The Mandalorian on Disney Plus showed us that we can have, or basically gave way to this idea of doing you know, blockbuster style films in a, you know, TV style cinematic format, you know, I mean, stuff like, you know, Breaking Bad and, and movies of that ilk gave rise to, you know, dramatic, the, the, sorry, the renaissance of dramatic serialized television in a way where we want to, you know, we don't want a 90 minute story. We want, we want to watch complex character arcs, you know, go up and down and this, that, and the other. And what better, what better source material for that kind of format than, you know, comic book properties, man, comic book IP, whatever these, these never ending stories about superheroes, man, you have so many arcs. There's so many things that are so much better. They're, they're so much well, they're, they're much they're much more better suited. That's what I'm trying to say. Sorry. They're much more better suited to the TV style of, you know, the TV 10 episode format or even like a six, six episode miniseries or seven episode miniseries that like Disney plus does with Marvel already. They already have a television, you know, sector. I just feel like that's the, that's the way to go you know, because stuff gets truncated or shortened or there's, there's so much character stuff that gets lost in the mix. And I feel like, I feel like the technology, you know, these led, you know, backdrops, backgrounds that they're using for like the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian, it's like watching a star Wars film every single week. It's kind of unbelievable. The fact that it's gotten to this place where we have live action Star Wars coming to us on a regular basis. Back in the day when you got a Star Wars film, that was that was huge, man. That was a huge impactful moment. You know, it's the same thing when like a you know a Batman movie would come out or just whatever, you know, X-Men movie, good or bad. But all of that we sort of have lost, we've been desensitized. I've been desensitized. There's a new movie every year. And I do two new movies every six months. And there's just like, I can't keep up, man. I can't keep up. So I'm like, all right, so what if we just trim that down from uh, a two and a half hour movie to uh, 45 minutes to 55 minutes of serialized television every week? And then you can get really detailed and, you know, into the nitty gritty. And again, Technology's getting better. People are throwing more money at TV. Uh, it, we just we have this new format that is is good. And you know, listen, I am 
a film lover first and foremost, but like, I just feel like, I just feel like we are losing or, or this really, really, really great source material is slowly just getting lost more and more using the, the, the two and a half hour cinematic format, you know? It's like, how do you get bigger and bigger and bigger? Here's a great example. Look at Endgame. Endgame was the, really, in my opinion, Endgame is the culmination of all of that, you know? Endgame is is the culmination of 22, what is it, 22 Marvel movies, all working in tandem to bring us this epic conclusion. And it's like, where do you go from there? How do you do it bigger? The one way that they chose to do it was Spider-Man No Way Home. It's like, how do you top what you do in Endgame? How about if we pull all the people that played live action Spider-Man in the last 20 years and let them star in a movie together? I mean, it's like mind boggling that this really exists. This is a this is a fan fiction on Reddit that has somehow come to life in the best possible way. And it's here. It's here now. I mean, it's amazing. I'm, I'm not complaining about that, but I'm just saying, how do you top that? Now you have the Flash bringing back the Keaton Batman, which I'm super stoked about, you know, amid all the controversy and whatnot. I mean, that is the one shiny thing that, like, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, it's like Keaton Batman. And, you know, I've disparaged Keaton Batman in a variety of ways, but from a nostalgic point of view, and that's the other thing, too, is that it's this banking on the nostalgia. Okay, if we can't, you know, if if we can't go bigger than Mar- than Endgame, let's let's hit the nostalgic buttons, and that's what we're getting with, you know, this trend of Michael Keaton and Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, you know, um, and and I'm sure eventually that novelty. I don't even know how many that are left, how much more you could do of that sort of thing. I guess bringing back Hugh Jackman now because Hugh Jackman hasn't been Wolverine in years. Now Hugh Jackman's coming back for a Deadpool movie. It's like how much of that nostalgia, I hate to even think of Hugh Jackman as nostalgic at this point, but I mean, very soon there will be because there's a new crop of kids that are just getting into Marvel who, you know, Logan was when they were really, really young and now they're they're teenagers and they're like, oh yeah, that thing I liked when I was a kid. <laughs> makes me feel really old. <laughs> I mean, whoa, <laughs> that is scary. That's a scary proposition. So, Ultimately, I think the best thing to do or the best thing that can be done or a way to shift everything would be to go with TV, with, with TV, man. And then all of a sudden, instead of taking these ginormous strokes that are getting so big, it's like the Dragon Ball Z problem. What do you do after you become a Super Saiyan? How do you, oh, you're Super Saiyan 2. Oh, and there's Super Saiyan 3. It's like how much more you get, you get, you lose a sense of all this power that these characters are supposed to wield because their, their power just gets so overwhelming and it just, and none of it, it, de, it desensitizes you. As I said, it desensitizes you to what is going on. So I, I think the way, the way forward, the way bigger is to actually shrink go down, shrink down to TV size, but then you can give us these big season finales. Give us a, a 90 minute, give us a 90 minute season finale on TV that is way smaller. It might be way smaller than something that end game. Oh shit. My car is about, oh fuck. What did I just do? Oh my God. This is going to suck. Uh, that's not good. Right, whatever it is. What it is. Um, Cause then you get like 90 minute, you know, they're already doing it on HBO. You get these like 90 minute friggin' um, epic finales that sort of can cover all their bases. And then, and then every once in a while for something really special, X-Men and Fantastic Four, those are two things that are going to be developed soon in the Marvel universe. Give us an X-Men Fantastic Four uh, crossover movie. Although, yeah, I think I would like to see X-Men as a TV series more than, I don't, don't give me movies. I don't want new movies. Give me an X-Men TV series, man, with like 13 episode arcs or 10 episode arcs. Same thing with Fantastic Four. And then you do that crossover movie, right? That would be really cool. And on the Star Wars front, front, um, you know, they've really expanded everything with, with the Mandalorian. And instead of giving us a, a movie per se, how about just keep, just keep exploring. 
Um, give us, give us a hut, the hut movie. Give us uh, Job of the Hutt's cousins or whoever those guys were, you know, in in the in the Book of Boba Fett. Well, I want to see them. What's their story? Maybe there's a civil war in the underworld, and they gotta you know go up against each other. They need the Mandalorians to help them. I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking off the top of my head. What do you think? What do you think about that? Is is TV the way forward? Is going smaller the best way to go bigger? Because there's the last point I'm gonna make. The very last point I'm gonna make. If you have shows running, basically what you're doing is an extension of books, right? It's like if you have a book, you have, you know, you have X-Men, you have, you know, the Amazing Spider-Man, you have, you know, the New Avengers. You know, it's like the instead of doing it in book form, now you're doing it in TV form. And maybe the stories aren't as epic and cosmic because, you know, you got to keep it relatively scaled down to make it work or make it contained. A lot of those Mandalorian episodes have really simple plots that make it easy to do something like that. But I feel like you can get more complicated. You can kind of pull it out. I don't know. What, what do you think? What do you think? I want to hear.